Yeah, you know this video is going to be pretty boring because it's just going to be me just waffling on for a long time. Unless you own a transporter or are thinking of getting a transporter. That being the case, you're going to find this video pretty interesting. All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in yet again. So this video is gonna be me talking to you, camera, no van, no children, no noise, quiet. But I'm gonna be going through a deep dive into all the things that are right and wrong with my transporter. Let me just say that I'm gonna cover a lot of ground. So what I've done is I've categorized this into various sections. So hopefully whatever device you're watching this on, you should be able to see in the bottom bar, the various sections where you can hover over it and actually see. If you go into the description, you'll see I've categorized what we're gonna cover in this video. Mm. So, a lot of people say a lot of the time on Instagram and stuff like that to me, your van, best van on YouTube, best this, best, you're right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's nice, I love it. And I don't want it to sound like I don't, but I'm gonna come at you this time with possibly quite a few negatives because too many people get upset with their own vans. And Instagram and, and all the rest of it is very much puts a kind of shiny cover on things. The reality is I daily drive my vehicle, as many of you do too. And you've got to be prepared to put your hand in your pocket if you daily drive a vehicle because you're gonna get some bits and pieces go wrong. You might find that you nick a wheel, um, stone chips. There could be many reasons why you need to put your hand in your pocket, but some people really um, can't come to terms with that fact and they're daily driving their vehicles, especially these vans, they're going onto sites if you're using it as a workhorse, etc. Take nothing away from the fact that these, pe these vans are most people's pride and joy, mine included, love them. I have a big soft spot for the VW, which is why this channel has appealed to quite an audience because I'm sharing that through the eyes of this camera, as well as the fact that I like to make cinematic videos. Anyway, so probably best to cover this in, a, in an order that I modified the van is probably the way I'm gonna take this. So the first thing I'm gonna say is I started with the suspension. And um, when I bought the van, I initially put some springs on it, which I made a video about, and that's on the channel if you dive right in, if you're interested in that, where I physically lowered the van myself on springs using the original shock absorbers. It's great, 50 mil drop, drive was good on 20 inch wheels, it was good. Um, but I moved that on after a while. It wasn't, certainly wasn't the second mod, but keeping on the suspension, I moved on to air suspension because I wanted the, the sort of static parked look to be lower than the 50 mil springs. But I did need to be able to adjust the vehicle so we could go camping in it and do everything or daily driving it. So I might just come around a corner and there's a huge slope and that front sport line bumper is just gonna ground out. So the air suspension allowed me to bring that look down a bit for parked or if I knew the road was smooth, I can drive it that low, etc. cetera. Um, but also be able to just air out, air up. But the air suspension didn't go quite to plan. Um, there's an entire video on this too, and um, I cover the fact that when I did the air suspension, I got into some wheel difficulties. That, be, that being that the wheels that I had on the van at the time I had it, um, the suspension installed, were quite wide and they did slightly stick out the arch. So not realizing that you needed to air right out, with the air suspension, which part of the calibration process, the wheels were gonna to be too wide, so I needed to swap those. Um, but 
that's probably just down to not really forward thinking and a lot of people have learned from my mistakes i know that because you've actually commented or messaged me um but after driving the air suspension for a period of time it has actually gone wrong um there is um not in a way that the vehicle hasn't been drivable i need to say that it's not let me down but the control panel is basically not working now. I can push these buttons and there's only, I think, one bu button currently working on that control panel. And over sort of a process of maybe three stages, because it flickers a bit at night as well, um, that control panel seems to be faulty. And I do need to get in touch with um, Air Ride to Airlift, whatever, to see what uh, what the next steps are to get that resolved i can operate it from my phone through bluetooth but obviously i just uh, i need to get that fixed so there are some problems with that um the other problem that has happened while i was daily driving the vehicle is uh hit a slightly large bump uh, i don't think it was a pothole but the um uh, one of the near side um top mounts completely gave way i did manage to crawl home it wasn't too bad because i didn't it didn't bottom out or anything but clearly it was not good and um limped it home got home and uh, after checking into it the top mount had completely gone through i do know that this is actually quite a common fault when you've lowered your vehicles because the stress that they're under and stuff like that it's only rubber it's like a big bush Speaking to the experts, I got on to Transporter HQ and I did have to order and install some heavy duty top mounts, which um, I didn't make a video on the process because of the fact the van was immobilized really, needed to get them on there. Transporter HQ, once again, some seriously quick delivery times on it. I placed my order, it arrived the next day, I fitted it that evening. And um, touch wood, it's been really good ever since because that's probably four or five months on now. So something that it sounds like it is quite a vulnerable area on the transporter, especially when you've lowered it, is the top mounts. The stock top mounts are not very good. Um, before that, I actually had another noise occur. And so um, diving into what that was, uh, the linkage that again is a stock part between the anti-roll bar and the um, the axle had completely exploded. The One of the uh, ball joints had completely exploded because it's just plastic. Um, I think that comes from running air ride more so than anything else because when you compress to air down and things like that, there's got a lot of um, extra pressure on some of these parts that they weren't designed to do. Um, but a very good um, fix for that is that they make some heavy duty ones. Um, the chaps that actually put the uh, air ride on my van, I got in contact with them at the time and they suggested that um, I recommended a part which was for a different vehicle actually. So I'm not gonna put that in the comments um, just because it isn't actually designed for the transporter. However, it actually fits on perfectly and it's a heavy duty one. So I've fitted both sides. Um, and I think there's slightly, because it's very slightly longer than the stock one with a metal ball joint, um, it, it does actually take some of the tension off when you wear out. The one that I used was meant for, I think, for an insignia, Vauxhall insignia. So you do the math it's kind of a bit ironic but fitted on great and um, i was very appreciative of that recommendation again i don't really want to put that in the description because it's um it's not something i'm going to advise other people to do but if you hear me i've actually done it and i've been very pleased with the results and i think that's probably been in uh, maybe six or eight months maybe nine months on as well with several thousand miles all going well so in a nutshell, the air suspension isn't as glossy as uh, it may seem, um, but nothing major. The vehicle has not been off the road um, to, to, for any length of time. Um, but I think when you make these investments, you've got to come to expect that they are 
Um, it's like a universal kit that's been sort of drilled and designed to fit the final components of your vehicle. It does the job really, really, really well because the drive in that van is as good as I'm ever going to get it. But as I say, it hasn't been a smooth ride um, because I think I've had the air suspension. It's got to be a couple of years now and I've probably done about 18, 19, 20,000 miles on that air suspension. Yeah, I think it's about 20,000 miles. All in all, it's still, I would do it again. Um, so that's the suspension. The next thing to um, go on to is the headlights. I get a lot of questions on the headlights that I'm running on the front of the vehicle. Mainly people are talking about the headlights. Um, I had the version two Transporter HQ DRL headlights on the vehicle, made a video about that. And um, at some point, a lot of you have seen that I upgraded them to the version three. That was something in collaboration with Transport HQ. They um, reached out to me and said, would I like to do the upgrade? They like the content, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, we, 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 that's what we did. Um, after fitting them, I personally decided I preferred the V2 from a looks point of view during the daylight. I just think the lens as you look at it looks most OEM, although those are some really subtle differences. Um, but my main reason for wanting to go back to that is because I really like the sort of staged sequential indicator, bit of an 80s man, and it kind of fits me. Um, not to mention that that's a bit brighter and um, that, that is worth noting that because the indicator is not within a diffuser, it's literally just behind a see-through lens, the penetration of that orange light is really bright in, in um, bright sunlight. So there was about three reasons there, I think, why I switched it back. Um, have to say though, the illumination of both models is, is, is identical. So the dipped headlights and the main beam is on the very same platform as far as I'm aware and what I could see. So whatever bulbs you're running in those lights, they are going to be illuminating the roads on dipped and main beam in exactly the same way between the version one and version two, uh, version two and the version three. It is purely the indicator and the DRL day running lights thing that changes. That's all it is. Um, so that's why I went back to the V2s. Just love the way that indicator does that sequential look. So they're back on there. Um, the bulb that I'm running in there is the H7 LED unit from Transport HQ. That is a game changer. It, on dipped headlamp driving, it's really, really good compared to those terrible stock headlights that the van came with. I know everybody knows that the problems out there with the stock lights, they're, they're just, for such a massive headlight, I don't understand why they can't throw light out, but I don't know, I'm not a light expert, but these ones are much better at doing it in dipped headlight driving. And because of that prism lens on the front, the LED um, lamp is not road legal, you see. That isn't actually a road legal bulb. But because it's behind that lens, the MOT side of things, I have had an MOT done on that vehicle. It's had its first MOT in September last year, and it went through at a main dealer, no problem whatsoever. I think if there was a problem with one of the bulbs, like it was flickering or it had gone out and they, they tend to look in the headlamp to see or something like that, then there may be a fail there. But because you can't actually visually see it, there's no reason to assume that it's not legal. The main beam side, however, is completely visible. You can actually see the bulb through the lens. So if you stick an LED one in there, you aren't gonna get through an MOT, it's just obvious. But because of that, the, the main beam side of the light is only a little bit more advantageous than a stock headlamp. So hopefully that's going to give you a strong uh, reflection on the headlamp units that I've swapped out on my van of what you could expect if you buy them. Overall, never had any problems with them. Um, 
no flickering, no issues, no electronic issues, no, no error codes on my dash, plug and play, really good. And um, I have actually got like a video where I fitted them on the channel. So you can, if you're interested in a bit more detail on those, head over, there are two videos, one version two um, with DRLs and the second one would be the version three. Uh, version two shows a bit more of the fitting aspect, but depending on which light you're interested in yourself, you can decide which video to watch or watch them both. They're good. <laughs> um, the other side of the lights I get asked quite a lot is the little tiny DRL lights that are lower down. Um, they came from traveling light and they were part of the black gloss, gloss lower grill. Um, that has been faultless. Those lights have always worked. They go dim when you turn the other lights on. Uh, so as it's nighttime, they get a little bit dimmer. So they're a bit brighter during the day. And I've, I'm really glad, pleased with the purchase. I'm glad I got them. Um, they've been faultless. Bit of a pain to fit because one of the clusters very, very slightly clips um, a bit of plastic work in the bumper, but I have got a fitting video on that and with some very, very minor modification with a little Dremel tool, in they went and they've been faultless. Um, so if you were interested in those, I have had no, zero issues with them and they came from Traveling Light. Um, so yeah, they came with a grill. So that pretty much concludes the front headlamps. The rear lights uh, also on mine came from Transporter HQ. And um, there's a choice of three there, I think. I think there's like smoked, red, I forget now. But there's a, a choice of colors, but they're all the same lights. And they've got the sequential indicator. Um, on there as well. So it kind of completed the set when I went for it. Um, I did choose the red lights because they were most OEM looking, which is the kind of look I go for. OEM plus is the look I go for with this van. And uh, those red ones seem to fit the bill again. Been really pleased with those. There's only one drawback, which is that um, the transporter with the normal lights, not the LEDs from the factory, doesn't have two reversing lights. It only has one on the um, near side. Uh, it would be great if it had two because these lenses, I think, have got two. You can see where the other side would be. Um, haven't yet figured out if I could tap into the wire and which wire it would be on the lens to pick up. But if you know that, I would be very interested in the comments or if there's any way it can be coded on, not really sure. It is something I've wanted to get into. I really want to see if I can commission the other reversing light because uh, I actually live in a very rural spot and um, those reversing lights would be handy if I had twice the brightness. That's about the only drawback um, because the rest of it has been faultless yet again, um, sealed, it's been through all weathers. I think I've had those for a couple of years as well now. So it's been through a couple of um, different winters and stuff and they're absolutely perfect. So that's the lights. Um, what else we got? The exterior grill on the front is chipped. Um, I think that that's no reflection on the quality of the part. Stone chip's a stone chip. But I have been able to purchase the red strips. It's the red bit that's chipped. And I have been able to separately purchase that. Um, unfortunately, it's a bit of a pain because I've got to completely remove the bumper again to be able to get to the little tabs that will allow it to pop out. I did think I could slide my hand in there, but it's a nightmare. So I think we're gonna to have to whip the bumper off again and I will swap that out. But I was able to purchase the part separately for about 50 quid. The rest of it has actually stayed really good. The, the gloss is all maintained well, hasn't faded. Even the red hasn't faded, just took a bit of a blow to a stone chip. Um, the other thing that uh, I was going to mention is the dual battery. So. The dual battery that I had fitted last year, um, lithium battery, um, now that I've had a chance to use it a couple of times to go camping, 
it hasn't lasted a long weekend, if you like, because I use my coffee machine quite a lot <laughs> and it is a beast. It draws quite a lot of juice. I think it's running when it's actually cranking for the couple of minutes. It's about 1600 watts it's trying to pull through the inverter. So it's a hell of a blow on that battery. But being as I drink a lot of coffee, I can see that from if I wanted to do a completely off grid um, long weekend, I would run out of steam before, you know, if I went Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that's too long. I get two days, but I won't get three. Um, I would probably look into the option of adding a bit of solar onto mine so as I can be throwing something back into the battery. Currently, I, I just have the battery and I have that charging off the engine with some um, Victron clever magic that's under my passenger seat. Um, so in most cases, that battery is probably going to be absolutely fine for people because you're not going to be trying to pull. 10 coffees maybe over a weekend through it like I do um, but if you do that battery is not going to have enough in it to keep you going for the whole three or four days. Um, generally for lights running the TV, the fridge, it's excellent and I've been really pleased on that front. Um, so I'll probably look at investing in solar power this year for um, putting some charge back into that battery. I mentioned the fridge. The fridge that I've got, because a few people have asked me which fridge is it, um, I'm going to put the model across the screen now because I don't know. <laughs> but I do know it's really good. I've been really, really, really impressed with the um, amount of energy that it uses to run. But more so than, more than anything, the how fast, if I got to turn it on for a camping trip, Within 30 minutes, in any weather, it's down to temperature. Um, it's obviously going to use more juice to do that, but once it gets there, I think it stabilizes and maintains. It's just low, it uses very little energy, so it's really good on my battery. And it really stays nice and cold. So it's a Dometic, um, and it's the chest type freezer. But it's, it's, it's absolutely awesome. So I, I, I would, if they still make it, because I've probably had that about three years now, I would highly recommend it. I did see a brand new model that's just cut that uh, Transport HQ have just dropped. And uh, I wouldn't mind one of those, that's, that's, that's for sure. It looks a really, really nifty bit of kit. And I think there's some kind of battery built inside it so you can decamp and take it to the beach or wherever and keep it, keep it going. That sounds like a really good idea, um, but mine doesn't do that. It's completely, it runs off um, 13 amp mains if you want, or off the 12 volt. Um, it does have, I think, a USB port on it, but I never use it because I've got others. But fridge has been really good. All right, so now it's time to cover off the tuning aspect. Um, if you follow the channel, you will have seen that um, August, uh, about 18 months ago, isn't it? It's August 2020, I think it was. I had a stage one um, remap carried out by Revo at their headquarters. And um, it's been faultless. It's been absolutely faultless. Uh, and more than that, I have not endured any problems with um, servicing with the garage because I had uh, some free servicing with that vehicle when I bought it and I absolutely thought they would just throw that out when I, when they asked uh, at the first service if it had been um, tuned, mapped and uh, no, not at all. They, were, they, 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 they treated it like any other vehicle, um, which was great. And also the insurance, I did expect that that might be difficult to, um, for the insurance company to figure out what I'm talking about and whatever, I phoned them up. They said, is it stage one? Stage? And I said, yeah. And I was, like, I was just amazed that they knew exactly what I was on about. Tick, tick, off we went. And I personally didn't pay any extra premium uh, um, with the uh, on the policy. So I was chuffed because I'm still enjoying the extra horses that are pulling that vehicle along today. 
Um, I don't think the 150 is a bad engine straight off the bat out the factory. It's got a decent performance level to it. The gearbox seems great because I've got the DSG, as you might know. But that extra bit of performance definitely is noticeable. And I and after, um, I guess, again, it's about 20,000 miles-ish, um, it's been faultless. So anybody thinking of getting one of those done, I can report after doing quite a lot of driving on it that it has had no drawbacks, not at the garage, MOTs, insurance. It's been um, no problem at all. Um, and at the moment, at the point of filming this video, so this will obviously be um, just for a limited time. I believe that Revo are doing an offer on that tuning. Um, so you might want to head over to the only Revo website and just have a look if you're interested in getting it done because I don't know how long it's on for but as I say at the time of filming this video I do th believe they're doing a promotion when there's about 15 odd percent off of that tuning. Um, all in all though I would go straight back and have it done if I ever bought another one of these because it's been every turn of the key, no issues, no nothing. So definitely recommend the Revo stage one tuning if you're thinking about getting it done. Um, if you missed the video and you wanna see a bit more drilling down into that, then there is, I made a video on that and so did they. So you can also see the video on their social media or website, uh, which I'll be in where they did their version of it, or head to the video um, on my channel, which is clearly marked. What's next? My little list here. Oh, I get, yeah, I get asked a lot about the, the TV that's in the back. Not the flip down, the smart TV, the 12 volt TV. It is a 12 volt TV made by Sharp. Only downside is I'm not sure if they still make it. I'm not sure if it's still for sale. Um, the TV um, runs off 12 volt. It's got a really good TV reception. So when you pull up somewhere where you're not completely secluded or covered by caves or something, generally um, where you may not get a signal on a, a, a run of the mill TV, that one seems to, to be really good. There's this tiny little uh, aerial that I just pop out, magnetized to the roof, and basically the whole van becomes the receive the antenna. Um, and uh, it tunes in real nice. I've been really impressed in most cases with the way it receives TV. Even better if you're near a Wi-Fi, because it's a smart telly, so I can get onto YouTube and watch all the cool videos uh, on there, but um, or Netflix or something. But um, uh, yeah, I have to say the TV has most impressed me because usually they are just not worth it. Um, and that is a sharp 12 volt, um, 24 inch TV, I think it is. Um, 24 inch, very, very flat. Um, and um, yeah, low energy as well. So we can watch that if we're off grid and uh, not moving the van for a whole weekend. That certainly isn't the reason my battery won't last a long weekend, it's the coffee. Some things I was gonna cover that I've done in there that I would possibly change is um, the roof I carpet lined and um, after some time with that, I would have preferred if I'd used the Alcantara suede. I'm probably going to change that at some point. So that's probably going to be a video that comes to the channel when the weather's nice, because I'm thinking of doing a slightly different lighting configuration. Um, I'd like to put some more lights in the front, um, because when I spin that seat round, that passenger seat, if you wanted to read a book or something, you're not sitting in the lights that are running off that circuit. So I was thinking, because they're so slim, those lights, if I could get two more of them, um, that it might be good to put them just in front. Uh, as you turn the seat round somewhere in front there, that would also come on. Um, maybe even on a separate switch, I don't know. So that if you were, because sometimes the kids are in the back, we'll be driving along and um, they all might be doing something. They can have those on 
while I'm driving without me, it really sort of dazzling me um, or, or causing me any issues with driving at night. Um, if they lit up as well, obviously that would stop that. So I will possibly put another switch on that where I could have them on as well or just those two. Um, but that's something I would have changed basically. I would have put two extra lights above the driver and passenger seat so that I can illuminate that area as well because you do sit there at night and uh, so yeah. The other thing I'm going to be doing to the van to move and moving forwards is I still need to get the rear uh, seats designed by somebody and um, like I'm thinking of a nice cushioned purpose-built wraparound um, so if anybody watches these videos watching this knows somebody that can actually build or um, fabricate something where I can make a nice base cushion for an L-shaped sofa and then a back cushion drop that in the comments because I'd be really interested to hear of somewhere I could go to um, somewhere in the Midlands ideally but other than that I'm prepared to travel um, that does that and uh, could provide that service because they haven't actually done anything in that area yet but do need to get that sorted um, other than that I think and the reversing lights which I was keen to hear if anybody's ever managed to get that reversing light to work and which wire it would be in that cluster let me know because um, I would uh, or if it's a coding thing whatever you know on that when you've had the non-LED lights from the factory and then you install the transport HQ lights into it. Uh, how, if you've managed to get your reversing light working, I'd be really grateful to hear from you on how you did it because that will be something I'll make a video on. So it's definitely something I'd like to do if, if it's possible. Um, but other than that, I think I'm gonna draw that video to a close. So as you, as I said, it's not all gravy. Sometimes there are things that go wrong and you've got to be expected when you modify a van to those levels to sometimes pick up a bit of a tab to re-renovate, re uh, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but overall, I don't think I would change anything that I've done about my vehicle other than those things I said I'd change. <laughs> um, but there was nothing major there. I've been really pleased with everything else. And uh, hopefully that's also answered a lot of people's thoughts or questions, especially on the headlamps, because I get that a lot. Um, if there's anything I missed out that um, you'd like me to make a further video on in this fashion, drop it in the comments below. I will add it to my list because I'm gonna do a and a in the next um, couple of months. Um, I will probably take some questions on Instagram and in through the comments of here, gather it all, and I'll do another Q&A because quite a few people have asked me to do another one of those. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, be grateful if you want to, head over at T6 Project, and um, there's loads of imagery and content on the van on there as well. And um, Typically, a lot of people message me in loads of different ways. Facebook, here, Instagram. The number one way to reach me is always on here because I do go through the comments and that's my first port of call. I do go through the DMs in Instagram, but I get a lot of spam, so I don't go through them daily. And sometimes those messages get lost in there, so apologies for that, but it's just so much to go through. So if you're on YouTube and um, you're not subscribed, either leave, leave those messages in the comments on the videos if, uh, if you can, uh, or sub even better yet, subscribe. But I do go through them. So as a second port of call, if you're not able to put a comment on the YouTube video, then just bear with me and hopefully I will see your message on Instagram. Facebook, I don't really do that much uh, in the way of message checking on there and stuff like that. So it's probably not an avenue I would take to get hold in touch with me. Um, stick to YouTube first, Instagram second. Other than that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I really appreciate you watching. If you got all the way through, fantastic. Um, if you wanna see more videos like this, come to the channel as well as the variety of videos I make. Drop that in the comments. Be um, very grateful to hear from you. Please do share the video if you thought it was any good. Give that thumbs up a, a tap. And um, if you're not already subscribed, you gotta ask yourself why not. It's free 
and I'd be sure grateful of your subscription and help me reach that 10K target. Thanks very much. Take care. See you in the next one. Don't tell the kids. They don't even like coconut. I love coconut. Mm.